We have four certifications at the WSGF, gold, silver, limited, and unsupported. The key criteria for the certifications are screen change, how the game responds to your aspect ratio, the HUD and how it responds to your aspect ratio, and solutions. How difficult is it to fix any issues with the native support? In this video, we're going to take a look at screen change, the primary driver of our grading schema. Horizontal plus is the most desired behavior in 3D games specifically. Horizontal plus means that the horizontal field division increases as the aspect ratio increases. As you move from the old school 4x3 square aspect ratio to 16x10 and 16x9 widescreen, ultra wide, and multi monitor, the game adds horizontally to the field division. This change is independent of the actual resolution. A game with horizontal plus support will have a wider field division at 1600 by 900 resolution versus 1680 by 1050 or 1920 by 1200, even though 1600 by 900 resolution is smaller. The opposite of horizontal plus is vertical minus, and this is an undesired behavior. While horizontal plus improves the field division as the aspect ratio increases, vert minus fixes the horizontal aspect ratio and then reduces the vertical field division as the aspect ratio increases. While vertical minus may not be very noticeable between 4 by 3 and say 16 by 10 or 16 by 9, the impact becomes painfully obvious as we move to 21 by 9 and multi-monitor aspect ratios. The horizontal plus and vert minus standards were developed years ago when 4 by 3 was the default aspect ratio for game development. Today, most games still adhere to one of these standards, but there are some games developed in the modern era, beginning with the Xbox 360 and PS3, that use a 16 by 9 aspect ratio as the baseline and exhibit characteristics of both horizontal plus and vertical minus. We call this hybrid behavior vert plus. In this scenario, the 16 by 9 aspect ratio serves as an inflection point. Aspects wider than 16 by 9 see an increase in the horizontal field division like horizontal plus, but narrower aspects of 16 by 10 and 4 by 3 see an increase in the vertical field division. The key difference here is that the 16 by 9 aspect ratio feels proper and is comfortable for gameplay. Though somewhat uncommon, vertical plus is still a positive behavior. It provides a wider field division for ultra wide and multi monitor as we would want, but it doesn't penalize users with the 16 by 10 widescreen with a narrower horizontal field division. Up next is anamorphic. This behavior is somewhat rare and was more common in the early days of widescreen adoption. With anamorphic, the developer fixes the aspect ratio of the game to a widescreen aspect, such as 16 by 9, and applies black bars to enforce this aspect ratio on 4x3 and 16x10 screens. Most anamorphic games will hold the 16x9 aspect ratio even when using wider screens. In these instances, the game will place black bars to the left and right. We call this pillar boxing. There are a few anamorphic games that will be horizontal plus when going wider than 16x9, effectively setting 16x9 as the minimum aspect ratio. 2D games may exhibit a behavior that we call pixel-based. In this instance, the amount the player sees on screen is directly related to the resolution, not the aspect ratio. Higher resolutions show more on screen, even when those resolutions are the same aspect ratio. For pixel-based games, 1680 by 1050 shows 80 fewer pixels of information horizontally than 1600 by 1200, yet 1600 by 1200 will show 150 more pixels of information vertically. We see this behavior in titles like the recent Pillars of Eternity and classic entries into the SimCity series. When you get to large resolutions such as 3440 by 1440 Ultra Wide, 4K Ultra HD, and Multi Monitor, you can get a lot of information on the screen at one time. Finally, we have two classifications for what is essentially an aspect ratio not being supported. The first of these is stretched. In this instance, the baseline aspect ratio, usually 4x3 for older titles and 16x9 for newer titles, is stretched across your chosen display. This takes the on-screen image and distorts it. This behavior was common in the early days, but it isn't seen too much now. The few times we see it now is when a developer doesn't account for a 16x10 aspect ratio and the 16x9 aspect is squished to fit in the narrower field division. We also have unsupported. The game simply doesn't offer support 
for a widescreen aspect ratios, and the associated resolutions cannot be selected. We see this in some classic PC titles released decades ago, and in some modern retro titles that call back to 8-bit or 16-bit graphic styles. Some of these games limit the outputs to a low 4x3 resolution, such as 320x240, 640x480, or 800x600. Many of these are meant to be played in a window rather than full screen. All of the changes of screen change can apply to the main gameplay experience, real-time in-game cutscenes rendered by the game engine, and pre-rendered full motion video. And indeed, you may see different behaviors with different parts of the same game. On a given title, gameplay and rendered cutscenes may be horizontal plus, while full motion videos are anamorphic. This is a pretty common occurrence. We've also seen instances where gameplay is horizontal plus, but the in-game cutscenes rendered by the same engine are anamorphic or even vert minus.